He went straight to the future, the children who are going to be grown up into this new identity. Mm -hmm. And he healed them. Taught them to read and write. Taught them to read and write. Yeah, we're going to have some new lawyers, presidents, and, you know, mm -hmm. governors. All that about to pop out in a few years. Planted the trees. Planted the trees. You can never go wrong with trees, right? You right. can't go wrong with that. And appointed the first African country. Wait, what? You, first African president mm -hmm. to appoint women in high-level government uh, positions. That's some class for you, right there. What's good, y'all? It's the Doom Machettes React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today we're back with another American reaction. Yes, yes. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell, because we're, we're on, on the road, road to 100 k And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. This is the story of Thomas Sankara, a proponent of Pan-Africanism and a heroic leader from Burkina Faso. Sankara challenged the conventional ways of doing things, leaving a lasting impression on his countrymen during his three and a half years in office. Is Often called the African Che Guevara, Sankara was a visionary who changed the name of his homeland from its colonial label, Upper Volta, to Burkina Faso, okay. the land of the upright. As the president of Burkina Faso, one of the poorest countries in Africa, he sought to change the lives of the Burkina Bay for good. He held that position until 1987, when he was killed during a coup which had been organized by his longtime friend, Blaise Compaore. People suspect that France and or the CIA were also involved as they were displeased by Sankara's radical and progressive policies. This episode is a brief account of the life and legacy of Thomas Sankara, the Pan-Africanist and Burkina Faso's upright man. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and to click the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new uploads that come out every Monday and Friday. Thomas Sankara was born on the 21st of December 1949 in Yako, French Upper Volta. He was the third of ten children and he was born to Joseph and Margaret Sankara. When he was growing up, his Roman Catholic parents wanted him to become a priest but he chose to enter the military. Oh, the military was opposite. popular at the time, opposite. having just ousted... How many times you hear that story? All right, well, at That's least a... he was <laughs> hey. leading something. No, of course, he became a leader still. <laughs> yeah. Um, But that's what's up. Like, he, he, he had to... He yeah, bro, to do. he had to do what he, he had still, to do. Look, he still did a mission. Mm. The mission is to bring your people somewhere, and he did it. For good, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the word. Yeah. For good. Yes, sir. The president that many people despised. Another incentive for his decision to join the military was that acceptance into the military academy would come with a full scholarship. Sankara was also passionate about music and he played the guitar. In 1970, at the age of 20, Sankara was sent for officer training in Madagascar. While he was in Madagascar, he witnessed a popular uprising of students and workers that succeeded in toppling Madagascar's government. It was also in Madagascar where he first read the works of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, and this profoundly influenced his political views for the rest of his life. Before returning to the Upper Volta in 1972, Sankara attended a parachute academy in France, where he was further exposed to left-wing political ideologies. It was in 1974 where he would earn much public attention for his heroic performance in the border war with Mali. But years later, he would renounce the war as having been useless and unjust. Thomas Sankara rose through the military ranks and in 1976, he became the commander of one of the commando training centers. It was in the same year that he met his ally and the man who would eventually lead a coup against him, Blaise mm. Compaore. Sankara was an eloquent public speaker and a dedicated soldier and this made him a popular choice for political office. He was appointed the Minister of Information in Saya Zerbo's military government in September of 1981. However, he would clash with his colleagues in government because of his unconventional style. Sankara would buy. Yo, he had a lot of um, he had a lot of bumps in the road when it comes yeah. to people. Right. To say he was a leader, you know right. what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not saying that was bad for him, but I feel like when you have those type of challenges ahead of you, 
it's like it pushes you to want to lead in a more, even you know, more. yeah, even more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. On top of him being a great speaker, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? People love them, but it empowers you. Dude has some bumps. Yeah, I mean, you gotta go against the grain. Some, some that's all it was. Way, that's all it was. You know, mm-hmm. to make a change, to mm-hmm. to create a new day, you gotta go against the grain for good. Yeah, <laughs> of the people. Right. Work every day instead of driving a car. While his predecessors would censor journalists and newspapers, Sankara encouraged investigative journalism and allowed the media to print whatever it found. This led to publications of government scandals by both privately owned and state-owned newspapers. After another coup which brought to power Major Dr. Jean-Baptiste Odrago, Sankara became Prime Minister in January of 1983. This post provided him an entryway into international politics and a chance to meet with revolutionary leaders such as Fidel Castro from Cuba and Samora Machel from Mozambique. These interactions further reinforced these left-wing ideologies. Sankara's anti-imperialist stance and grassroots popularity increasingly put him at odds with President Odrago. This led to Sankara being removed as prime minister and being arrested. His arrest angered a subsection of young military officers and on the 4th of August 1983, Base Kampaori, Sankara's friend, led a coup that freed Sankara and formed the National Council of the Revolution with Sankara as its president. The weapons that were used to overthrow that government came from Libya's Colonel Gaddafi. Gaddafi saw himself as a revolutionary who came to support another revolutionary movement. You can check the Gaddafi video in the description box below. Upon getting into power, Sankara was determined to give the country a new identity. He changed the country's name from Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, which means the land of the upright. He also gave the country a new flag and wrote the new national anthem. Sankara is renowned for some of the policies that he put in place when he came into power. Hold on, hold on. They ain't going to speed past that dude wrote the national anthem Mm -hmm. for his country. Gave them a new flag. He took that music ability and used it. He said, I can still sing. Right. I'm going to make a song. And so he basically was just trying to give his people a new identity. That's what's up. One that's not under, you know, another rule. I like yeah, that. I no. appreciate that. I, I don't see no wrong in that. No, nah, at all. I just go. It just goes to show you that goes to show you the uh, power in identity. Mm-hmm. Um, being somebody, having right. a, a, a class, a, a value about yourself. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Giving these people their power back. Mm-hmm. On a mission to shake up the status quo and improve the livelihoods of the people of Burkina Faso, I will attempt to lay out some of Thomas Sankara's numerous achievements. And folks, prepare to be blown away. He vaccinated 2.5 million children against meningitis, yellow fever, and measles in just a matter of weeks of taking power. Sankara initiated a nationwide literacy campaign, increasing the literacy rate from 13% in 1983 to 73% in 1987. In his three and a half years in power, his government planted over 10 million trees to prevent desertification. He would also work towards the upliftment of the Burkina Bay women. Sankara was one of the very first African leaders to appoint women to high government positions and That's also encourage them to a formal. Hold on, hold on. Let's listen to the blueprint what he just did here. He went for the babies first. Right. He went straight to the future, the children who are going to be grown up into this new identity. Mm-hmm. And he healed them. Taught them to read and write. Taught them to read and write. Yeah, we're going to have some new lawyers, presidents, and, you know, mm-hmm. governors. All that about to pop out in a few years. Planted the trees. Planted the trees. You can never go wrong with trees, right? right? You can't go wrong with that. And appointed the first African con- wait, what? You, first African president mm-hmm. to appoint women in high level government uh, positions. That's some class for you, right there. Okay, you yeah, all right with me? What's on that one? <laughs> Jobs. Women were also recruited into the army. Female genital mutilation was also outlawed <laughs> as well as forced marriage. I'm talking about, and I knew you, bro. I knew you was gonna stop me on that Recruited one. Recruited as in, I'm talking about like, well, voluntarily or involuntarily. You know what? Well, women are such a powerful force alone. There's so many things that y'all can do in the field. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And what I'm, from my experience, a lot of women are like in the medical, mm-hmm. the healing, the fields, and stuff yeah. like that. So they could have had a mass majority of women do that, and they could have a mass majority who knew combat. See, I would have been in logistics. Oh, I see. I didn't add that word. Logistics. And logistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> logistics. Oh, they just probably have some assistance, some organi- people that like to organize things, get the logistics. paperwork together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, high-level positions. Not, not and fighting. also encourage them to have formal jobs. 
women were also recruited into the army. Female genital mutilation was also outlawed, as well as oh, forced outlawed. marriages and polygamy. Okay. I'm pretty sure wow. that this following policy that I'm going to state was jaw-dropping and caused a lot of indignation for Sankara from his colleagues in government and other African leaders who were used to opulence that came with being in office. Sankara sold off the government fleet of Mercedes cars and made the Renault 5 the official service car of the ministers. He also reduced the salary of all his public servants and forbade the use of government chauffeurs and first-class airline tickets. In case you're wondering if all these measures apply to him, well, don't be. This guy led by example. He lived on a salary that he kept at the equivalent of 462 US dollars per month. His few assets were public knowledge and they were a car that was an unimposing Peugeot 205, a refrigerator, a few bicycles and several guitars. This guy was very serious. Sankara redistributed the land from the feudal landlords and gave it directly to the masses. Wheat production rose in three years from 1,700 cages per hectare to 3,800 cages per hectare, making Burkina Faso self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, folks, there's still more to come. Thomas Sankara believed that Burkina Faso could learn to sustain itself without foreign aid. He refused aid packages from the International Monetary Fund that he said came with strings attached. Mm. One of his famous quotes was, The one who feeds you usually imposes his will yep. upon you. Sankara would try to persuade other African countries to collectively refuse to pay their financial debts to their former colonizers. I'm pretty sure this produced high levels of condemnation from some very powerful people. There are some people who also point out to some of the not so good things that happened during Sankara's time in office. There have been reports of human rights abuses, including cases of torture, detention and other violations. Sankara's revolutionary zeal led him to allegedly target certain elements of the society as enemies and they were persecuted. Ooh. Despite all of Sankara's progressive reforms, however, by 1987, Sankara's government was also in trouble. In his attempts to root out corruption, Sankara set up public tribunals that tried nearly 1,000 government officials and civil servants for the misuse or theft of public funds. Many lost their jobs plenty without just cause, and this angered many of the country's elite. Sankara's policies also antagonized France and its ally, the Ivory Coast. During this whole process, Sankara also suspected that his right-hand man, Blaise Compaore, might be plotting a coup. Compaore had lost faith in the revolution. On October 15, 1987, Sankara was killed by an armed group along with 12 other officials in a coup d'etat organized by Blaise Compaore. Sankara's body was dismembered and he was quickly buried, while his widow, Mariam, and two children fled the nation. Sankara was 37 at the time. Parties. Once Blaise Compaore assumed the role of president, he immediately reversed the nationalizations of the country's resources, wow. overturned nearly all of Sankara's policies, and rejoined the International Monetary Fund as well as the World Bank. Compaore would remain in power for 27 years until he was overthrown by the popular protest in 2014. The legacy of Sankara still reverberates in Burkina Faso and across the continent of Africa, even 33 years after his death. An author of Thomas Sankara's biography, Ernest Hash, once said in an interview that Sankara was ahead of his time among African leaders in terms of promoting women's rights and putting it on the agenda. And he promoted women into the cabinet, which was quite unusual in African countries at the time. Sankara was also determined to improve the livelihoods of his people in an era where most African leaders are in power either for their own benefit or for their family, political parties, or a particular ethnic group. Let me know in the comment section below. He did all that by the age of 37. Oh, so he can just get turned around? Mm. But that's, that's, that happens a lot. That happens here. I'm just saying, though, uh-uh. Not 100%. Not 100%, but I'm, a new president I'm looking will at, come in and uh, then do everything. They the always do that, though. Did. They, not, they, that they never do that fails. out of spite. And they I'm never like, fell. It's like because they don't want to piggyback off of what the mm -hmm. last president. If they and I made that mention a long time ago, if the president's piggyback off what the last president did, the, the like the road would be straight. We'll progress you know what I'm forward. saying? Everybody would be moving forward. Piggybacking off of the right one, mm -hmm. not yeah, the one right we'll just one. be trying to do. Right. But when you have that one president that just come in office and he like, yeah, that all looked it really good. You had a great vision there, mm -hmm. sir. But um, we're about to just oh, do away with it.
And um, I had this idea I wanted to try. <laughs> right, like it's, we a puppet. It's selfish, dog. <laughs> it's mad selfish. Yeah. And I don't know if I heard him correctly, but what did his best friend turn the on? The best friend. Yo, that's sad, the, bro. It be your best friend. It be your homie, man. Mm -mm. Gosh. Yeah. Man. He was a real powerful man. Ahead of his times, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I love what he did about the women. I don't know about the torture part. Did they keep the flag and the yeah, national yeah. anthem? Yeah, yeah. We need to know did that. they keep that? I, w I would like to know that. You know what I'm saying? Um, ah, the best friend. He was a Judas. The best friend. He was a Judas. He was a this Judas. This whole time I was listening to this, I was thinking of the Black Panther. Yeah, he does. Yeah, Man, mm -hmm. it was, it was, this was a good guy, bro. He um the Black Panther Party, y'all, not yeah, Wakanda. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I had to think. <laughs> yeah, he jumping out of armies and uh, vans and stuff, just in a yeah. suit. Yeah, this is the guy right here. That's how you know it all went downhill. Once the best friend did what he had, to, did what he did, and I had to, yeah. he had to do it. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna digress. But hey, yes. suitable to him too because he did go to other countries trying to aid them in a the direction that he yeah. felt fit that was yeah. gonna really benefit him. I mean, you in a position. Not too many people get in a very powerful position mm -hmm. and want to help. Right. Like they're just they, like some us. people piggyback off of other missions mm -hmm. and say, "Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with what you're thinking," yeah. and we, we, we're gonna be yes men to that. But mm -hmm. then you have some people who are very self sufficient and they want to grind and they want to change and yeah. do was. Going down a crazy path of success. Right, crazy right. path. That's Definitely. Amazing. I loved it. Very good profile. Yeah, profile so, was bomb. Mm -hmm. Killed it. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way, as well as our join feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Our action request link is in the description box Check it below. Out. Check it out. Send in some requests. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.